It's time to complete the quadruped. It has been sitting in my shop and occupying space in my head, unfinished, for far too long. I want to get the new mainboard to work so that I can fine tune the gate and write the code that makes it all work. Let's start by replacing the old mainboard with a new and hopefully final version. I can then complete the inverse kinematic model and get the butt walking again. I'm keen to get some closure to this project that by now took probably two and a half years to get here. It was fun, don't get me wrong, but there are many more projects that I want to work on and that I have been putting off for far too long now. The current mainboard causes the legs to twitch the moment the motors draw a bit too much power. The bot will sometimes work on the test stand, but it will definitely not work when put on the ground. It was really frustrating to find that out after designing, testing and assembling the board for months, especially since it's a step back from the previous board. I find I need to take some time off from a project when I run into this kind of problems. But I always build new excitement for it after a couple of weeks or months. So here we go. The major evolution of the board is the buck converter that powers the high current rail for the 12 motors. The first prototype board used a very feature-rich and expensive buck converter that could be configured using I2C. Probably not the right thing to use for designing my first series PCB, but it worked well in the end. The second board used a much simpler buck converter, but well, this one is not working and I can't make the butt walk. The new main board is using something in between the two extremes. This one can be configured via I2C commands, but is very simple in the design as it only needs a couple of components to work. It was really fun designing a new board with this converter and I'm totally planning on using it in many more designs now that I've figured out how to work with it. After designing, I got my board manufactured and got to assembling. Over time, I picked up a couple of tricks that made working with PCBs and assembling them much easier for me. For example, I'm using these nifty little boxes to store my components and maintain a spreadsheet with how much of each component I have in store. That way, I'm no longer buying simple components like 10k ohm resistors for each project again and again. When it comes to assembling, I'm using interactive HTML BOM when placing components which is made even easier by using the component IDs from my inventory list as I can quickly identify the box containing the component. Previously, I would need to sort through a mountain of bags with really hard to read labels. As mentioned, the previous bug converter was not working correctly. I tested it, but only on a dedicated evaluation board that featured only the converter and none of the other things. One theory I had was that the final board design introduced flaws that caused the issues with the converter. So this time around, I intended to load test the buck converter as part of a final fully assembled board. I created a dedicated test board that would allow me to hook up the, the main board to an electric load for testing. The test setup consists of a power supply providing 12 volt input, an electric load that can sync a configured amount of power, and a thermal imaging camera. I'm right. using the Fluor One Pro for that, it makes it so easy to identify hotspots on a newly designed board. I'm usually checking that nothing gets hotter than 85 degrees under peak load. And I'm also looking for unexpected heat sources like underdimensioned diodes, traces that are too narrow, or just generally ICs with poor heat management. Here I'm stepping through incrementally higher loads, waiting at each step for the heat increase to stabilize. After I convinced myself that the board was working fine, I started installing the board and fired up the robot. The robot is not working properly. So the, the gate is working fine in the beginning, but the moment I put a little bit more load, the moment I make the gate a little bit faster, it stops working. It gets all jittery and it takes a while before it uh, gets back to the, to the normal gate mode. And why it's all jittery, the uh, LED uh, directly connected to the out of the buck converter is flickering. So something is collapsing the voltage, something is just drawing so much power that the buck converter can't keep up. And that is very much the same failure mode that I saw in the previous board that had an entirely different buck converter, different layout for the buck converter, and uh, a couple of things that were worth a sort. Um, but we say we see the same issue. So something is not 
working, something systemic is not working. And honestly, I don't quite know how to proceed. What a roller coaster of emotions. I got into work and saying I'm relieved it would be a little bit of an understatement. Uh, here's what I learned. The buck converter has overcurrent protection. When it registers too much current being drawn, it shuts down, waits for a couple of milliseconds and starts up again until no more overcurrent is registered. The issue is that the overcurrent situation happens because uh, the motors are needing that power to move into a position. When the buck converter starts converting again, the motor still wants to go to this position and immediately draws too much power again, which makes the converter shut down again. And this cycle of drawing too much power, shutting down, booting back up again, and drawing too much power again repeats every 20 milliseconds. And we get these seizing up behavior of the robot. The thing is, I knew the motors would draw more power in total than the buck converter can deliver, but I thought that would rarely or never happen. Well, I was wrong. What made the initial converter on my first mainboard work was the ability to turn off this behavior. It would not shut down when too much current was drawn. That's usually not a good idea because it means the inductor oversaturates and ultimately the rail voltage collapses. But that's really not a big deal for my use case. Luckily, this buck converter has the same feature and it instantly made this issue go away. With that out of the way, the robot is walking again, and this time with a nice mainboard and improved cable management. We can see the board drawing quite some power, and this power draw is not very constant. And this is after a number of bike converters, so it's easy to imagine how there would be much stronger spikes present at the converter output, which then leads to uh, registering and overcurrent. Before I can continue, I need to repair the board. The bot tipped over and rolled onto its back from all the excitement. That broke the power switch, which I now need to replace. And while I'm at it, I might as well try to raise this bar here to protect the mainboard from further damage. Next thing on the list is the inverse kinematic model. Without too much detail, as you can watch tons of videos about it, a leg has three joints. Each is actuated by a motor, and we can use trigonometry to create a model to find out the position of the foot given the three angles of the joints and the length of the, well, bone, so to say. That model, taking joint angles and providing the foot position relative to the origin, is called the kinematic model of the leg. The inverse kinematic model is, well, the inverse of that. It takes the foot position and spits out the joint angles needed to get there. Again, we can use trigonometry to get that model. Now for the kinematic of the whole robot. This time we look at the center of the body, somewhere here and combine the inverse kinematic of the legs to make the body move along the three axes. It's pretty straightforward, really. When we want to move the bot along the x-axis in the positive direction, we move all the feet the same distance in the negative direction. And the same is true for the other two axes. One thing I had to learn the hard way is that you want to have consistent coordinate systems between the various kinematic models. In this case, the body and the legs should share the same axis. For example, I started with the legs using a z-axis going from the origin of the leg down to the ground and a z-axis from the bot going from the bot center up to the ceiling and other fun things which made it really hard to combine the kinematic models correctly. So be consistent with the axis. The last part of the kinematics that I wanted to solve and that I struggled in the past to get right are the rotational axis of the bot. There are three and they're called roll, which is around the x-axis, pitch around the y-axis, and yaw around the z-axis. I was initially trying to use trigonometry to do these axes as well, but there is a much easier way. As we can view the xyz position of the foot to be a vector, there's a single matrix multiplication that we can perform on the vector that rotates it around roll, pitch, and yaw. I'll put a link to the wiki page explaining the math behind it in case you're curious. Now for the fun part. The mainboard has an initial measurement unit on it and it uses an accelerometer, a gyroscope, together with a dedicated processor to determine roll, pitch, and yaw. I got the bot to read this information 100 times per second and compensate for any changes. 
that means we can put the bot on uneven ground and it will compensate so that the body is straight. Trying to demonstrate how the bot reacts to, to these changes here, you can see it's pretty responsive. I made some updates to the controls so that I now can configure the position of the bot and each individual leg to compensate for any oddities in the assembly. I'm gonna play around with this and see how it improves this ability while walking. Overall, I'm pretty happy how that turned out. The bot works pretty nicely, has a professional looking mainboard, at least in my opinion, and is somewhat feature complete now. I might revisit it in future and do uh, uh, maybe some kind of robot gym where I can use uh, computer vision and ML to improve the gait, or I might add a LiDAR or even a robot arm to grab things. But that's it for this video. If you made it this far, thank you, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a like or maybe even subscribe. It would mean the world to me and motivate me to continue making videos. Till next time.